Welcome to the Small Business Blueprint, a podcast for local business owners who are looking to reach sustainable growth. In each episode, you'll hear directly from small business owners and leaders who have navigated the changes and setbacks that outline their unique blueprint to small business success. So join us to learn how you can turn their stories into actionable steps to transform your business into an established brand in your community. Welcome on in to the Small Business Blueprint Podcast. Joining us here today is Ian, coming from uh, the Build Brothers Inc. Company, which is a roofing and solar company servicing all of San Diego County. Just a quick backstory on Build Brothers. You guys were founded um, by yourself and your brother, Byron uh, Frisch. You guys are a family-owned business with over 20 years of experience in both residential and commercial roofing and solar. Mission of the company is to build a company that provides a safe, reliable, and positive work environment for employees and families, build strong relationships with clients through clear, productive communication, and create high-quality projects. So, Ian, thanks for joining us here today. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me. This is exciting. Absolutely. It's always fun to get somebody else that's a that's a local business to us here in San Diego on the podcast. We work with so many small businesses that especially ones with that local connection mean a, a little bit more to us. Uh, since you're servicing our community as well. Before you and I hopped on here, you were telling me that the company story is something that you like to, you almost brag about in a way. Uh, It's something that you hold very close to your heart. If you wouldn't mind, share that story with us. How did this company get its founding and how did you guys really build this strong culture that you guys have? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to share it. So um, I'll try to keep it short and sweet, but, uh, (laughs) but, to really understand the, the kind of roots of this company, you got to go all the way back to my childhood. And um, like a lot of people, I come from a broken home. Um, my dad decides to leave my mom, and I'm the youngest of six kids, all six kids still at home uh, with my mom working, trying to trying to afford to feed all six of us, right? Right. So, right about the time my mom is uh, is about to split us up with aunts and uncles because she can't afford us, she starts dating my stepfather, and my stepdad proposes to her, and this amazing man moves us into his house. Right, his new fiance and her six kids, uh, ranging from seventeen years old down to what was I six or seven years old. And uh, I look back at that now, being the age that he was when he married my stepmom, or excuse me, when my stepdad married my mom. And I think, holy cow, what was he thinking, right? <laughs> so, um, so, anyways, he's he's a phenomenal man. Um, he moved us into his house, and his house was a four bedroom, you know, maybe seventeen hundred square feet. So there was not enough bedrooms for, for all the kids. So my very first home improvement project was actually converting the garage of that house into a bedroom for me and my brother to, to call home. So, um, so, and then from there on out, my, my stepdad was very do it yourself, whether it was changing out the transmission and the motor on my first vehicle. Okay. Or it was, you know, all the landscaping or maintaining the pool or any roof leaks plumbing no matter what it was we were doing it ourselves and so he taught me a ton growing up but i think that story um is 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 why i sincerely understand what a positive impact home improvement can have on a person's life right yeah uh, (laughs) otherwise (laughs) otherwise i was sleeping in the garage you know on a cot or something right right much better to have so, a bedroom and, and learn the hard way, so to speak, than to be sleeping on a cot in a garage. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so yeah. So, years go by, obviously, and uh, I get out of high school. Um, for one reason or another, I decided to skip college and just go right to working. And uh, I, got, I got a job with a general contractor and spent about six years working for him, doing high-end remodels, full kitchens and bathrooms and finish work and exterior. And uh, continued to learn a ton with him. Um, And then uh, I left that job and went to work uh, with my brother, partnered with my brother, Byron, Mm -hmm. uh, at an at an insurance firm that uh, that he had started. And we were actually briefly in the insurance business and realized very quickly that, uh, boy, pushing paperwork around and selling this imaginary, you know, 
product uh, yeah. was, was not for us. And so it was time to get back to the tangible, get back to something real, providing a service, providing a product um, that really, really, you know, it, it would help help people on a daily basis. And so, um, so we incorporated, started this company the end of 2013. Okay. And uh, we actually started by buying a, a franchise, a solar franchise. The franchise or eh, it wasn't, let's, let's just say it wasn't like McDonald's franchise, right? It solar running. franchises are notoriously like that, especially in those early days. They were uh, a little bit of yeah. the Wild West. <laughs> Absolutely. And so they, they didn't provide much help, much direction. We basically had to figure it out ourselves. Okay. And very quickly, we realized that we needed to be uh, a roofing contractor as well because they just go hand in hand. Right. Whether the uh, whether it's a, a roof vent that needs to be moved or it's a complete re-roof or a partial re-roof where the solar is going. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of aging roofs in Southern California and San Diego, especially. Yeah. So so uh, so we partnered with a roofer briefly and uh, learned what we needed to learn and, and met some of the people and got our licensing in place and uh, and have ha have since had a lot of success in the roofing business as well. It makes a lot of sense that you guys are both roofers and do solar. Like those two things do go hand in hand. That's generally where, you know, most homes have their solar panels is on the roof. Um, so being able to handle those re-roofs or fix the roofing issues while putting the solar panels in place, um, goes hand in hand. Um, you were also mentioning to me before we hopped on here that you guys had an interesting uh, story or two pop up during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic last year, especially out here in California. Most businesses that could be outside, like you guys are, are outside most of the time, were considered essential businesses. Um, how did that go for you guys? Was there anything, any other struggles or, or downtimes that popped up for you guys you weren't necessarily expecting? Sure. I mean, I think the old saying, uh, a roof over your head, um, really clar <laughs> clarifies the fact that roofing is an essential service, right? Yeah. Uh, with every structure on earth needs a roof and uh, it needs a waterproof roof to, to keep that structure livable. Right. So uh, it was no question that we were a, we were an essential service. Um, and uh, I were still remember the project we were on. It was a duplex in Cardiff. And okay. the poor lady's roof was was leaking and she had actually been out of the country for a couple months. She had a home down in Mexico where she would stay half the year and a home in Cardiff where she stays half the year. Well, she contracted us to uh, replace the roof. Um, COVID shutdown happens and, you know, we're deemed essential. And we go in there on a Friday morning or something to tear the roof off and replace it. Mm -hmm. And one of the neighbors comes out very, very emotional and very upset that we are working during the shutdown, right? Okay. And he actually, he called the sheriff's department on us. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> and uh, and and then uh, he yelled at my my roofers uh, on that job. Majority of them were Spanish speakers, mm -hmm. and so he starts yelling that at them in Spanish as well uh, that they need to stop and this and that. And uh, I think the sheriff's department never actually showed up because <laughs> after he explained to them what, what he was complaining about, I'm sure they blew him off. Yeah. Like this, but, uh, not necessarily a best use of our time right. for the sheriff's department. Right. So that was probably the most exciting story was, you know, a, a neighbor completely losing their minds that we were allowed to work. And I tried to remain kind of empathetic because it turns out he was a small business owner. And his business had been shut down and he mm -hmm. was not allowed. He was not allowed to make a living. And um, so, you know, I tell that story, but I also uh, felt bad for the guy because because, yeah, there were so many small businesses that were forced out of business by this shutdown. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I kept I keep my opinions to myself and, and I remain pretty neutral on the whole COVID shutdown. But uh, but I can't can't help but feel sorry for him, you know? Yeah. It's one of those things where if you, if you were able to continue working during the pandemic, it was a blessing because nothing really slowed down in any way, shape or form. And if anything, since we, we work with a ton of home service contractors here, we saw them get an uptick 
in their business because most people were at home. They started to notice these little things that they hadn't necessarily noticed before. A lot of people had the time and uh, some extra time and some extra resources to be able to take care of these sorts of issues, especially working from home. Um, you know, you could you could manage multiple things at the same time going on in your home. Uh, so we we really did notice an uptick in business for a lot of home service contractors. I, I was actually curious if you all saw the same, if you saw if you all noticed that more people wanted to add solar to their home, especially with the tax incentives that there are out there for for having solar on your home. Did you all see an uptick in business during the pandemic or or even notice anything on the roofing side of things as well? So the short answer is yes, we doubled in size. Okay, <laughs> yeah. absolutely, um, it makes sense. Yeah, uh, exactly. So as homeowners spend all this time at home, they realize that they're only using more electricity. And so they realize, okay, I've been thinking about that solar, it's time to go ahead and pull the trigger on that, right? Mm-hmm. And as homeowners spend more time at home, they realize, man, I've been staring at that stain and it's been getting bigger for the last three years. Let's go ahead and get that roof job completed. So, so yes, business has been great um, for us. And I think most contractors in general are very, very busy. Backyards and room additions and remodels. And so, I mean, myself... I spent a bunch of money on my house this year. I remodeled the master bathroom and and uh, because I've got a soccer player, two soccer players at home, I turned a big corner of my yard into a uh, into basically a soccer training facility. <laughs> Very so, nice. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Save a little uh, extra money on the, the you know the soccer coaches and uh, getting to a facility and things like that. Why not just build it in your backyard? Exactly. <laughs> you know, so, something else. Uh, as soon as the shutdown happened, I, I went, wow, this is going to be a huge opportunity for me because all those businesses that have been shut down, they all have salespeople, right? And now right. those, those salespeople are going to need to need to learn a new skill, need to learn a new trade. And so I didn't jump on it as a, a kind of as fast and aggressive as I probably should have. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but since COVID started, so... Right at the beginning of COVID, I had two, my only two sales reps or estimators leave, leave my company. Okay. And uh, since then, one of them came back and I added four more. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so, so yeah, it's, it's worked out great. And, uh, and funny story, um, I ended up hiring my, my stepbrother who I grew up with, mm-hmm. um, who came out of uh, a company that had seen some slowdown since COVID. And so he lost his position and uh, as well as a brother-in-law who, um, who same situation, COVID slowed, slowed their business. And so he lost his, lost his job. So uh, not only did I double in size, but I also did it by hiring family. Best way to do it. It's yeah. the best way to do it. That's awesome. I was actually reading an article the other day that one of the, the side effects of the, shutdowns and the pandemic and everything that's happened is the restaurant industry is really hurting for for workers right now. And I was really curious as to why that is. And and it kind of leads into that where <clears throat> all these people that used to work in restaurants had to find more work. Like that was their livelihood. And all of a sudden it was essentially gone, especially uh, out here in California, in places like New York, and a lot of places where, you know, shutdowns happened really hard and very quickly. Um, all these people that were working in restaurants decided to look at other avenues for work. And one of the biggest places where folks that were in the restaurant industry have turned to is working sales jobs because they're they're naturally good at talking to people um, and having a steady paycheck um, as well as the ability to earn commission work has been a huge boost for a lot of people that were in that industry where it's very similar. You have your, you know, your base salary that you're making as a, a you know, bartender or something like that. And you're making tips on top of that. So a lot of times the harder you work, the more money you make it works very similarly in sales. Um, so the restaurant industry has had a hard time finding people to replace those people. Um, which I, I just found was a really interesting, you know, kind of side effect to the pandemic. And it sounds like a business like yours can almost take advantage of something like that, where you have this bigger, broader sales force essentially to, to pluck from or potential sales force to pluck from. How have you all been able to add new employees like that? And like you said, you guys have doubled in size essentially during the pandemic. 
the number one thing that separates you and your business from most other contractors that are out there is that you all have a, a great culture, but B, an incredible reputation. How have you all been able to maintain that reputation at the same time as doubling in size of your business? Sure. Yeah. And uh, and that's obviously a very challenging thing to do. Um, you know, a lot of companies grow too quickly and they don't have the systems and processes in place to make sure that customer satisfaction uh, stays high and, right. and, and reviews come in positive and five star. So, um, you know, one of the things that stands out in my mind when I think, hey, why, why do we have a lot of happy customers? Well, A, I've created a pretty decent reputation as a good guy to work for on the technician side. And so I have okay. a lot roofers and solar installers reaching out to me that are excellent at what they do want to come to work for me and uh so i have 100 percent confidence in all of my technician that the work is being done really really well right right uh, but that's almost secondary to communication um because even if even if a project doesn't go smooth a project doesn't go to plan if the communication is on point you right can you can save that relationship, you can save that customer experience, and you can end up getting a five-star review out of it, right? Right. So, so my sales reps, my estimators are are also project managers and, uh, and are also very involved in the project from beginning to end because they are the they have the original conversations with those homeowners and those customers. They should be there for any changes um, to the contract. So in, in, in roofing, there's a lot of change orders that happen because there are all kinds of surprises we run into. So wood repair is always going to be charged extra and uh, the, the estimator needs to be involved with the homeowner when we discover if if there's some wood disaster that's going to cost thousands of dollars, right? Right, right. So if we're on top of it, if we're communicating as that happens, um, then the homeowner their expectations have been managed properly. Okay. And, uh, and that, and that keeps them happy. If, uh, if there's been no communication at the, and then at the end of the project, an invoice goes out with an extra $3,000 in wood repair. Well, guess what? You're going to have an unhappy customer on your hands. <laughs> right. So, Absolutely. So, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's a big one. Um, and then everybody in my company, um, from, from office staff or, or back-end processing, they all are encouraged to, hey, if you have a question, if you have an issue, reach out to the homeowner, right? Explain right. what's going on. And that that just keeps the line of communication open at all times. Because if you rely on all communication to go through the estimator, through the sales rep, um, then there could, be, uh, there could be things lost in translation. Absolutely. Constant communication, keeping that transparency alive. That's the, yeah. I, I love it. That's a, the best way to make sure that your customers are happy, um, no matter what business you're in. Um, so I love that advice. And last thing before we go, you all have not only a great reputation because of that communication that you all have, but if you were to go do a quick Google search and look for you folks online, you have a ton of five-star reviews. What's the number one tip you would give to any other business owner to be able to, to gather and get those five-star reviews up online so that other people can can read those. My brother and I have a really good kind of yin and yang management style or um, run the company style, right? Right. And uh, I am, I'm the, I'm the one that's pushing for growth, pushing um, to, to, to hire more people, sell more jobs, grow the company. And he's the one that says, well, hold on. Um, let's slow down. Uh, this isn't a startup. We don't have a bunch of money to just throw at, at something, right? So let's do it methodically. Let's make sure the systems and processors are in place before we, before we do that, right? And uh, same, same methodology goes towards making a, a grumpy customer happy. Uh, I'm all about just throwing whatever we need at the job to make things right, right? If uh, if if the if the estimator or the sales rep didn't didn't explain the giant mess that was to be expected in the garage, and the garage gets filthy, well then, hey, let's send a maid over there and let's clean the garage as well as the rest of the house and let's save this job, right? Mm -hmm. 
Whereas my brother steps in and he goes, well, wouldn't it be a lot cheaper if we just sent a couple of our guys over there to do it, right? As opposed to a professional made company. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I go, okay, yeah, that's probably a better idea. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, my, my reaction, my first reaction every time is just give, give, give. And, uh, and then he goes, well, let's, let's slow down, think how we could do it in a less expensive way. Okay. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Um, able to get those reviews, go about it in the most efficient way possible. Um, yep. If you wouldn't mind, Ian, tell us where anybody who's been listening to this podcast here today, where would they be able to find your company, um, social media, all that good stuff? Where, where would anybody or anybody that's look, looking to hire you as well, where would they be able to find you guys? First and foremost is my website. Uh, my website, eh, we've been working on getting it to rank higher on those uh, organic, you know, Google searches, uh, but a uh, very competitive environment out there. So buildbrothersinc.com is my website. Buildbrothers, plural, buildbrothersinc.com. Um, that's the website. That's where I'd start. Um, you could submit a, a request to have us reach out to you, or you could find our contact information there. Office phone number 844-276-5278. And then we're on all the socials. Uh, we are building a huge YouTube channel. Uh, Love with, it. With mostly educational content, uh, roof inspections, uh, details on battery backup um, or, or energy storage solutions for homeowners, um, as well as typical solar installs and that kind of thing. And so, yeah, my, my, my YouTube channel is is growing very quickly uh, build brothers inc um on youtube as well i run my personal instagram kind of kind of as business and i am ian underscore frish underscore 619 and uh that's i a n underscore f r i s c h underscore 619 and uh, mostly what I do there is unique situations that we run into uh, on a roofing project. I, I, I try to keep it kind of interesting and not just the mundane, but but the really crazy stuff that we uncover in roofing projects. So I, I love it. Yeah. So, some of my stories can be kind of entertaining, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, I love uh, it. but yeah, the, the, the business Instagram is Build Brothers Inc., and uh, you can find us on LinkedIn, both my name, Ian Frisch, as well as Build Brothers Inc. And, uh, and same thing with Facebook. So I think we've got it pretty well covered. Um, and then, uh, then, yeah, we are five stars on, or almost five stars on Facebook, Google, and, and Yelp. Love it. Ian Frisch, thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, really appreciate you stopping by the Small Business Blueprint Podcast. This has been great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to the Small Business Blueprint. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to follow along on Apple, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. This podcast is brought to you by GoSight, an all-in-one platform that makes it easier for your customers to find, book, and pay for your services online instantly. Get started for free at GoSight.com.